welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I am coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, which lies atop the traditional lands of the Otegamishing Anishinaabeg people, where I live with my fiance, our two daughters, and our five cats. And this is primarily a knitting podcast. However, sometimes I talk about some of the other crafts that I'm delving into, such as cross stitch, crochet, and embroidery. So um, a big warm welcome to all new viewers and a big welcome back to all returning viewers. I hope everyone is doing well and um, yeah, getting lots of making done. So we're just gonna jump right into things today. So I'll start off with what I am wearing. So, because this is my first finished object. So I'm wearing my Florarium, which is a pattern by Teti Lutzak. I knit mine up out of Knitted in. I held two strands together and I used two different colors. And I'll try and stand up so you can see what this looks like. It's kind of hard. So it's got this lovely color work at the bottom and on the sleeve cuffs, and as well as the yoke. And it's knit bottom up in the round. So you start with a provisional cast on at the bottom hem and you knit up you do a little bit of waist shaping and then you put everything on hold and then you go on to the sleeves and you knit the sleeves cuff up and then you basically put everything on one needle and knit around i think there's so you do have to leave some stitches on a on a cable um just so that you can go in later and do uh, either kitchener stitch it or i think they i think the the designer actually recommends casting off a certain number of stitches and then going in and seaming it. I chose to do Kitchener just because I find that um, easier for me. But yeah, and then yeah, then you do this lovely color work yoke, and then there is a crochet. I, don't know if I can show you. There's a crochet uh, bind off that you do. She has a link to tutorials on YouTube to show you exactly how to do this. And then you go back in and you do another row of, like a decorative row of crochet stitches around. And I did that for, well, you do that for the sleeves, the neckline and for the hem. So like in her pattern, if you look at the picture, you can see that she has two different colors for her bind off or she bound off in the main color, which would have been the gray for me, and then did a row of decorative stitches below that in her contrast color. And I just chose to keep everything the same. I just, I preferred the way that it looked when it was uh, both the same color. So that's what I did. I'm trying to think if I did any other modifications. So my gauge, my row gauge was a little off. So I did have to knit the body for quite a bit longer than what she specified because she, she kind of uh, dictates in rows, so in row numbers or round numbers, and um, I just needed to, to put, more, put more rounds in to elongate the body. The other thing is that when I cast on, you can see that the, the sleeves are quite wide. Um, I actually really, like, I really like this. However, when I cast on the sleeves for my size, there was a whole nother repeat. So that was, I think, 15 or 16 stitches. So it, they were even huger. And I just found that that was way too big for my liking. So I just uh, I just went down to the size three for my sleeves. So I knit the body at a size five, which accommodates a 45 inch bust, which I have. And the other thing that I did, um, oh, so when I did the sleeves, I had 15 or 16 stitches less. It was 15. Um, at the end so what I did was on my last row because I wanted the yoke to have enough width to accommodate my chest I actually increased on the last row of my sleeve all the way around to get an extra 15 stitches to bring it back up to the normal size 5 body so what that did was if you can see <laughs> I've got a little bit of a bulge going on there uh, I don't particularly mind it it kind of just looks like a little bit of a puff puff sleeve to me and I'm okay with it but you know in the in the future if you don't if you don't like this I would suggest increasing um more slowly <laughs> 
But yeah, overall, I'm super happy with it. It's really warm. It took me, I ordered five plates of the gray Nutidin and I still have at, like I haven't weighed it, but I'm sure I have at least a plate left. So I would say it took about four plates of the main color and then about maybe a plate and a half of the contrast color. So the only issue that I had um, was when I went to bind off, I think I was doing the kitchen or stitch under the armpits for, uh, to graft the two pieces together. And I forgot that, you know, Nuted in breaks so easily when you're trying to use a needle and sew with it or pull with it. So really what you have to do is kind of felt the, the yarns together, like just take them and do this really vigorously all the way along the length of of the yarn that you need to to bind off with and that'll provide the strength that you need to be able to pull so i yeah there there are a few curse words <laughs> that kept breaking my yarn when i was doing that it's so silly because i knit the wild posy and uh, that was one of my big tips was make sure that you do this before you try and do the tubular bind off or any kind of sewn anything with um unspun yarn so anyways i should take my own advice <laughs> So yeah, I'm done and I love it. And uh, it's super comfy, super warm. Um, yeah, very happy with it. And that is my first and only finished object for this, for this video. Okay, so now we'll move into works in progress. Hmm, I'll start with my Imker socks. So these are a pattern from 52 weeks of socks. I'll pop a picture in so you can see what the finished socks look like. And they are patterned by Nell, Nellie Droitz. So I had placed these on hold around Christmas time just because I had a lot of gift knit obligations and, and I was doing a test knit right before then. Anyways, they didn't see a lot of love until more recently. So the stitch marker progress keeper shows you where I was last time that I showed these. So I did the heel and I did, I think, a full two cable repeats up the leg. So here's the pattern. It's this gorgeous honeycomb cabling. I chose to do mine just up the front. Um, you can do it on the back as well, but I just, two reasons. I thought it would make it too tight. And secondly, I, I'm lazy. <laughs> it's just a lot quicker just to knit stockinette around the back. So it kind of gives me a break. So they have, there's an, uh, they're knit toe up, obviously. And there's an eye of partridge heel, I believe. It doesn't specify that's what it is. I've never done one, but I'm assuming that's what I think the pictures I've seen look like. So um, yeah, that was fun to do. Okay, so back to the socks. I'm knitting them two at a time, obviously. So once I had enough to try them on, you know, I got them, got the, the leg a little ways up so I could actually put them on and see how they're fitting. And I've discovered that um, the length is a little short, which I think I could deal with because I think if I washed and blocked them, I could probably get a bit of extra length that way. However, the width, and I did the bigger size, the width is too, it's too narrow too narrow and even so I can get them on I can put them on but the stitches are all stretched like the honeycomb is pulling apart it doesn't look good at all um, so even if I were to wash and block it was it's gonna wreck the cabling pattern I think so I just I just don't think they're gonna work so then I got my my 12 year old daughter to try them on thinking her feet are a lot smaller than mine um, they're not that much smaller than mine turns out but yeah too tight for her too so so these are gonna get ripped out <laughs> so sad because I I really liked how they looked the color and the pattern and everything it just looked really nice uh, so the yarn that I'm using is by small bird workshop it was gifted to me by my mom <laughs> for my birthday and it is a, it's on their cubby base. It's a sock fingering weight, 80% superwash wool, 20% hemp. So there's no nylon in this. It's a four ply, 435 yards per 100 grams. And the colorway is butterscotch pudding. 
So I have talked in the past about my love-hate relationship with this particular base. Um, for cables, it makes it extremely frustrating because it's, it's, it's very, very splitty and I'm cabling without a cable needle. So if you know what that entails, you basically slip the stitches off, rearrange the order, put them back on the needle, then knit them. So when I take them off and I put them, try to put them back on, sometimes I was only grabbing pieces of it and it was just, it, it has not been the most enjoyable knit. I've explained that I love Small Bird Workshops yarns. This is the first base I've ever tried that I just wasn't a huge fan of, but I was willing to persevere in the hopes of finding a nylon free sock yarn that would hold up. So it also has like, I don't know if you can see, but there's these little, that's not cat hair. <laughs> there's these little pieces of hemp that just stick out and they're, I don't know. My mom has knit a pair of socks out of this as well. I think they were, oh yeah, they were patterned as well. But she said after she washed and blocked them, they really bloomed. So they, and they were a lot softer, which is nice. They're not overly rough. I, I don't think I'd have a problem wearing these on my feet. Anyways, needless to say, I'm going to rip these out and I won't be re-knitting them in this pattern at a bigger size. I just, the, the yarn is just, no, I'll just probably do like a, just a vanilla sock with this yarn. I still will use it and I will still experiment with it to see how it lasts. But yeah, so I just wanted to give you guys an update because these are going to get, these are going to get torn out after the podcast. That's okay. I don't know. I don't have a problem when I know something's not going to fit or something's not going to be what I want it to be. I, I don't seem to have a problem frogging. Um, I will try other, like other ways to get around it if I can, but overall, when it, when it comes right down to it, if I have to frog, I frog. I, I don't have a problem with that. I know some people do. What, what about you? Do you, are you opposed to frogging? <laughs> do, do you cringe at the thought of it? Would you rather just throw a project in the garbage as opposed to frog it? Um, yeah, I just, I guess for myself, I'm like, I really want to use the yarn, so... I don't mind ripping back and and making something that I know I'm gonna love. So, so that's that. So my next work in progress is my Marie Wallen chestnut card. So for those who don't know, we are hosting a knit along, a year long knit along over on Instagram. It's using the hashtag a year of Marie Wallen Cal. Um, yeah, it's been really great, really fun. We already have. Uh, several finished objects, beautiful pieces. All you have to do is have started a Marie Wallen pattern design after August 1st of last year, and it will run till at least August 1st of this year. So I am knitting the chestnut cardigan as, as part of that knit along. Um, I should also say that we, we had an Instagram chatter group which apparently Instagram only allows a maximum of 32 people to be in that group. And we had more people than 32 that wanted to join in the fun. So I have moved the chatter group over to an app that's new to me called Slack. Um, anyways, all the, all of the information can be found in the description below and, or you can just shoot me a message on Instagram or Ravelry or whatever, if you want to get added. I've also moved my Ra Ravelry group over to the Slack app. It just makes it more more streamlined to have everything in one place. So yeah, you're welcome to join. Anyways, um, so yeah, I had just for as a refresher, I'd finished the, I've already finished the back piece of the cardigan. This is the back. So it's knit bottom up. You start with this gorgeous um, corrugated ribbing. And then you obviously knit the, it's fair all, so there's only ever two colors used in one row. You knit and purl color work. And then at the end, you'll seam it all, all together to make the cardigan. So that's the back. And I finished, I was working on the left front. And I finished my left front piece. <laughs> it's so hard to show because it's curling but I swear it is wide enough. <laughs> so 
So there's that left front. And now I'm working on the right front and I really don't have a ton to show, but this is as far as I've come. So I have to do the right front and then the two sleeves, which are also knit flat and then seam it together, I think, and then pick up for the button band and the collar. Haven't read ahead. Not sure. I think that's how it works. <laughs> Uh, so I am making the extra large size, which accommodates a 44 to 46 inch bust. I am using the call for yarns. And these are the colors. So there's eight different colors. This is Marie Wallen's British Breeds, which she describes as a fine blend of wool spun in Devon from the blue faced Leicester Exmoor, Wensleydale, and Zwartbull's sheep braids. These are little 25 gram skeins. Um, mentioned this before. I am not affiliated with anybody. I just talk about what I love. And um, yeah, I I love this yarn. It's it's so sheepy, so beautiful to knit with. It's to me, it's quite soft. I don't find it um, overly rustic, even though it's 100% wool. Um, the colors are, are really lovely. There's some heathering and some, there's definitely depth to the colors. They're not just, you know, uh, a solid color, which is really nice. Makes it fun to knit with. Not the cheapest yarn for me to buy. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, if over perhaps in the in the UK or, or, or closer to where MarieWallen.com is located, um, if it's cheaper for you guys, but I know for me, this is about twice the price of other similar types of, of yarn. So like Jameson and Smith, um, or Jameson's of Shetland, it, this is like twice the price. Plus I had to pay a huge fee for shipping. <laughs> so yeah, this, I've mentioned this before. I love it, but this will probably be the one and only time that I knit with it and um, so I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts. So I'm just taking my time, knitting slowly. Um, yeah, enjoying every second of it. And what can I say? I haven't made any modifications to the pattern. I'm following it. I did make a mistake in the, in the ribbing at the back. I've mentioned this. I used one of the an incorrect color in the ribbing, but I don't think you're gonna notice. And um, yeah, I've, I, I mark out as per recommendations from some of my knitting friends, they recommended um, marking out the repeat. So it's a 30 stitch repeat. So I put little markers in between so I know at least, you know, I have to look at the pattern when I do the first repeat, but then after that I can just refer to, to, uh, to my knitting to repeat it again. So that's been working out wonderfully. So yeah, I'm hoping to get that. Actually, I mean, I'm just aiming for the August 1st 2022 deadline <laughs> and if I have to go past it I have to go past it it is what it is I'm not gonna rush it so that is that uh okay so next up I have two new projects I'll start with the knitting one it's housed in this adorable little fox bag that I got from my needle crafts who is a Canadian Etsy bag maker it's really nice um right so i had found i follow sand and sky creations who's simone on instagram and i noticed that she had her own pattern out for this beautiful cowl it's called the winter winter light cowl i'll pop a picture in of what the original looks like it's just this beautiful color work two color color work cowl um that I desperately need <laughs> it's been so cold here it's either it's either really really cold and windy like minus 30s celsius or it's or it's snowing and we're getting dumped with like a whole bunch of snow there's no in between right now it seems so I really needed a nice warm cowl to to you know wear on my walks so Simone was so sweet and so generous and actually gifted me the pattern um so I set to knitting it up right away. Thank you again, Simone, if you're watching. That was, that was so generous, so sweet of you. Um, yeah, so it, 
let's see how best to show this. So I'm in the middle of still a row here. Oh, that shows up nice. You might not get the depth of color in this, this beigey brown. Um, I don't think it's captured. There are some nuances um, in this color. It's it's not just a flat beige. It's it's really pretty actually. So this, I'm knitting mine up out of Patton's um, Classic Wool Worsted, I think it's called. Let me see here. Platten's Classic Wool. Um, I have had this in my stash stash since oh my goodness for I can't even remember definitely before my daughter was born it's been you know 12 13 14 probably like 14 15 years <laughs> never used it I was gonna make a blanket with it actually so I'd purchased all this brown and this lovely beigey color that's I think the colorway is natural mix yes natural mix and again I don't know if you can see but there's beautiful variations to the color in here it's so pretty so yeah I'm using this this yarn um, to make this gorgeous color work cowl and I'm almost done so the middle point was right here um, well I guess I still have a little ways to go but it shouldn't be too too much longer I'm really going to focus on this project and getting it off the needles so you might be able to notice that um, I, I did alter the pattern a little bit um, from the original just because there was like a border down here um, and I originally I had the border knit in I started knitting it and realized it was going to be really tall like really really tall and I know it can slunk down or whatever but I, I kind of wanted it to be a bit shorter so I could sh you know show off the pattern a little more um, so I went back and I, I just removed that border and I'm going to remove the border on the top as well so I still think it it looks pretty and um, I just wanted it a little, a little shorter, I guess is the word. <laughs> but yeah, really pretty. And very enjoyable knit. Um, I will say there are some, there's some longer like floats. You'll have to catch floats for this. Um, but I, that doesn't deter me. I'm, I'm used to that by now <laughs> with all the color work I seem to be working on lately. So yeah that's that and uh, yeah i highly recommend you check out sand and sky creations i'll put a link down below um obviously to the pattern and you can check out her other designs because they're really pretty and she's canadian i think she's over on prince edward island if i'm not mistaken so that's cool too okay and finally i have one last i guess you can't really call it a cast on I forget what you call it when it's a crochet project. I'm not a crocheter. <laughs> okay, I'm not a master crocheter. I know how to do some of the crochet stitches. Uh, yeah, so housed in this beautiful, if I do say so myself, bag, <laughs> William Morris print bag that I made myself, my very first project bag is the crocheted, okay, what do they call it? Boho bunting? It's like a crocheted garland. So I'm using some leftover cottons that I have to knit up. I'll put a picture in so you can see what the finished finished pieces actually look like because I haven't done all the all the parts yet. But this, this is essentially um, one of the little flags. I don't know what you call them one of the little pieces of the garland. So there's gonna be a tassel hanging off the bottom here, and then I wanna get some wooden beads to put around it. And then I'm just going to, so I'm gonna make, I think seven of these, and then string them up in a garland. And yeah, I was gonna hang them up actually behind me <laughs> to be decorative for my craft room. Yeah, I've been having fun making these little crocheted crocheted pieces so I have I think I have four yeah I have four of them made I don't know if you can tell but they're different colors because I think I have different dye lots going on here but it's just a garland I don't think it really matters so yeah that's been really fun I can't remember who the pattern is by but I'll put the name below as per usual and it's using up some of my leftover cotton which is which is great 
I'm using a size USG four millimeter crochet hook to make them. The yarn that I'm using is, I think it's Bernat Handicrafter Cotton or something like that. It's thicker than what the pattern calls for. I think the pattern calls for DK weight, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm using worsted weight. So mine are turning out a little bigger. That's okay. I, I mean, again, it's just a garland. I didn't, I didn't bother to do like a test swatch or anything like that. But yeah, I'm having fun. It's, it's fun to do different crafts, like, it, you know, it's to, to, to switch it up. It just keeps your interest going. And it helps me um, get better at my crochet skills, which are not the greatest. So I've also been doing some crocheted granny squares for my Battenberg blanket, which um, I forgot upstairs. Truthfully, I didn't bring them down. So I'm just going to, I'll show them next time. There's nothing really, I mean, that exciting to see. They're just a bunch of little squares, but for me, I'm using leftover skinny singles or, yeah, I have a lot of hedgehog fiber skinny singles um, back in the day when I used to knit with with those. <laughs> so I've been using them to just make little, uh, little squares. And um, yeah, my thought is I'll do a Battenberg blanket. So what I'm gonna do is put like cream, in be cream squares in between all of the colored squares just to kind of tone down the colors because they're pretty, pretty bright. But it's been fun too. I like um, I like working with speckles. They're fun, and it's very gratifying. Doing a little granny score it takes like I think it takes three grams of yarn to make one, and I don't know. For me, probably about half an hour to do one, maybe less. But I'm not I'm not a master crocheter. I'm sure you guys out there who crochet are like, whoa, that's a long time. So uh, that is it for all of the knitting and crocheting works in progress and finished objects and such. I did go to a thrift store and pick up a few books while I was there. So firstly, I got this, which I just thought was so great. The Woman's Day Book of Knitted Sweaters. And as you can tell by the cover, oops, sorry for the glare there. As you can tell by the cover, I'm sure that this is quite an old book. Let's see if I can find the actual date. 1970, <laughs> where I was born. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought it was really fun. It has a bunch of patterns um, for all different, actually some of them are super cute. Like, I would totally wear that. Springy open work yoke sweater. That's cute too. Now I know that pattern sizes back then were not very inclusive at all. So I don't know. Let's see how big is their <laughs> large. Um, large is 19 to 21 inches. Yeah. <laughs> what? Really? That can't be right. Okay. Anyways, I don't, I don't think like I'd be able to fit into any of these truthfully, but um, I just thought it was really fun to look at. And maybe, you know, I'm, I'm getting better with my knitting. Maybe I can start to adopt things. If I see something I really want to make, I might be able to just make a bigger, bigger size. Look at this fair isle beauty. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, really fun. There's lots of kids' patterns in here too, I think. Oh, there's men's sweaters and there's children's clothes. So, you know, baby stuff. Yeah, just a fun little book. And then um, I got the Reinhold Book of Needlecraft. Again, sorry for the glare. By Jutta Lam Lemmer. Lemire. And this is, okay, is this the one? I got two books of needle crafts. And yeah, this one's just got like a whole bunch of different uh, designs in it. I actually really liked this for embroidery. It's like an embroidered alphabet. I thought it'd be really cool to make my own project bag and then put like, I don't know, put a bit of N on there for Nikki. <laughs> 
I really want to get into embroidery, actually. I still haven't, haven't delved into it. There's crochet in here. There's um, lots of, there's macrame. Uh, like I said, embroidery, all different types of crafts, cross stitch, cross stitch I've done, applique, rug hooking. Anyways, kind of an all-inclusive uh, guidebook to different types of needle crafts. And this is an older book too, now that I'm looking at it, I think from maybe the 80s. That looks like 80s. Oh, but look at this. Isn't that a beautiful quilt? Wow. I'd love to do quilting too. That's kind of on my list of things to try as well. Once I get better at sewing, which by the way, I have not sewn a thing since my mom was here over Christmas. Uh, yeah, so this is really cool because it's also got like... Um, different stitch patterns so it does that for knitting for crochet there's lace work there's it shows you how to like I already know how to knit but it shows you how to knit how to do different crochet stitches like actual visual things oh um macrame which is great because I really want to do my macrame kit and make my plant holder so yeah just a lot of oh my gosh sorry look at that chair that be beautiful of course my cats would just wreck the crap out of that but beautiful uh yeah just lots of different types of um needlework and i like that i had started reading this it has like kind of a summary of history of the different types of of crafts as well which was really cool so this is embroidery yeah anyways just another book you never know what you're gonna find at thrift stores eh? i love i love that i love it it's awesome so other than that i think i think that's it in terms of life stuff there's not a lot going on over here i'm trying to think what's happened mm, i got my booster shot for a covid vaccine and our 12 year old finally got her first dose um my partner's already been uh boosted up too so we're getting there um still working from home my daughter is in school she's learning in school and we haven't been doing too much i'm trying to think um <laughs> there's like really nothing nothing happening nothing going on it's pretty quiet over here and and that's okay i'm winter's definitely going going out on a you know on a dramatic note i feel like <laughs> we're we're into february now um what is the date today february 12th i think and uh i'm longing for spring but i'm trying to just trying to take it one day at a time because yeah winter's holding on we got like i said we've had really cold temperatures today is another cold one and yesterday we got a ton of snow and the day before so it's just you know you get you get you can spend so much time hating things and wishing for other things but really you know back to that whole gratitude thing right like you should appreciate what we have and and find beauty in what we see day to day <laughs> that's what i've been trying to do so yeah there's lots of beautiful um you know snow covered branches to look at and and i've seen some little mice tracks in the snow which i thought was really cute and yeah so I still am turning my attention to spring and thinking about potentially, you know, planting seeds and, and what I might want to grow. I think the flowers are good. I think I'm good for flowers now, but um, yeah, still on my mind. Anyways, yeah, so I'll leave it there and I hope you all have a wonderful next three to four weeks <laughs> when I'll see you next. And um, yeah, take care and happy making. Mm -hmm.